If you've looked into hair loss at all, you've probably heard about a hormone called DHT. It's basically the hormone responsible for male pattern baldness. Well, did you know that creatine increases DHT? And that's the one reason why there seems to be a connection between creatine and hair loss, but it's not actually that simple. In this video, I'll do a full review of all the studies and evidence to see how real that connection is. By the end of this video, you'll be able to make an informed, science-based decision about whether you should avoid creatine or not. So I've actually taken creatine in the past, and although it definitely helps me put on mass, it did give me more spots on my back. After that, I decided to stop using it. But recently, I've been getting into lifting weights again and wondered if the old tales of more hair loss after creatine were actually true. If you're worried about your own hair loss, then head over to hairguard.com where we have a powerful suite of products for maximizing hair growth without the harsh chemicals. Okay, so if you're into fitness, especially bodybuilding, you're probably very familiar with creatine already. Very briefly, for those who might not know, creatine is a naturally occurring substance in our body, and over 95% of it is stored in the muscles. Its function is to help the muscles produce ATP, which is our main fuel for high-intensity exercise. Parts of our creatine stores are naturally produced, and the rest we get from various food sources, particularly red meat and fish. And since the 1990s, we have creatine supplements. After proteins, Creatine is the most widely used supplement on the market today for bodybuilders, and for good reason. It's one of the few supplements that actually works. It increases performance, strength, reduces recovery times, and increases lean muscle mass. And these effects are not even subtle. It's also remarkably free of side effects. Usually, supplementation starts off with one week loading period of 20 to 25 grams a day. After that, the dosage drops to five grams daily for the maintenance period. But what about creatine and hair loss? Is it true that supplementation is linked directly to increased hair loss? This whole idea started from a 2009 study that looked at testosterone and DHT levels of athletes who supplemented with creatine. It found that creatine did not affect testosterone levels, but DHT was a whole different story. At the end of the seven day loading phase, DHT levels had increased on average by 56%. And after a further two weeks of the lower maintenance dosage, they remained elevated by 40%. The ratio of DHT to testosterone also increased and remained elevated. There were no such DHT changes in the placebo group and the differences between the two groups were statistically significant. The study authors concluded, quote, creatine supplementation may act at least in part through the increased conversion of testosterone to DHT. On the face of it, pretty alarming stuff, especially if you're worried about hair loss or even worse, already dealing with it but look a little bit deeper and things aren't quite so bleak. For starters, even though the DHT levels and ratio of DHT to testosterone increased, they remained within normal limits. Another problem was that the baseline levels of DHT were for some reason lower in the creatine group, a difference which complicated the comparison with the placebo group. This refers to the portion of testosterone in the system that is not bound to proteins and is therefore free to activate androgen receptors. And it is from free testosterone that DHT is synthesized. After the original 2009 study, we had at least a dozen other studies that looked at the effect of creatine on androgens. Most of these looked mainly at testosterone rather than DHT, but the results are fairly consistent. Most studies report no effect on total testosterone, and in the two that did, these increases were within normal limits. With regards to free testosterone, all studies that measured this have found no increase. But at the end of the day, even if creatine did slightly increase DHT or testosterone levels, it would make no difference. Bald men do not necessarily have higher than average blood DHT levels compared to the non-balding men. 
You can also be completely bald and have lower than average DHT levels. It makes very little difference. The idea that blood DHT or testosterone levels are reliable predictors of baldness is very simplistic and died several decades ago. I want to clarify that I'm referring to regular fluctuations within normal limits. Obviously, extreme scenarios involving anabolic steroids or other medications are a different story altogether. What about research directly looking at DHT and hair loss? To the best of our knowledge, there is no published piece of research that has ever looked directly at creatine and hair loss. Even the 2009 study that started this thing off did not look at hair. The word hair is not even mentioned in the text. Well, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. On its own, it's suggestive. Basically, no scientist to date has considered the matter even plausible enough to justify further research. Essentially, nobody ever researched it. But how does the scientific data square up with the anecdotal evidence? Go on any hair loss forum and you will find plenty of threads on hair loss linked to creatine supplementation. Guys swearing that shortly after they started taking creatine, they started noticing the first signs of hair loss. This is also a common theme on Reddit, YouTube, social media, you name it. How can this be so? My best guess is that creatine use is heavily concentrated among the demographic that is most likely to develop hair loss in the first place. Young males in their late teens to early 30s who are into bodybuilding and have sky high testosterone. By pure chance alone, many of these young men will have started their creatine supplementation at the same time as they notice the first symptoms of hair loss. Many of these men will also be lifting weights and will be quite conscious about their appearance, spending a lot of time in front of the mirror. So they are more likely to start noticing things like this in the first place. I may be wrong, but that's one possible explanation. So that's it for this video. If you're worried about your own hair loss, I really recommend watching Alex's 90 day hair growth challenge video, which I'll link to in the description. Also head over to hairguard.com for the simple protocol that saved my hair at age 26. Leave a comment with what topic you want me to cover next. If this video was helpful, please leave a like. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video.